Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is David, and today we have the best chap best chapter tag. Which I saw on Noah from Everyone Who Reads It Must Converse, uh, his channel, earlier this week. And I instantly knew I wanted to do this one. Uh, this came from Rick Harsh, who read uh, a chapter of Moby Dick. I've also seen uh, Brandon from Brandon's Bookshelf do this, where he read seven different excerpts of chapters from seven different genres. And all of them are excellent. And so today I wanted to read a letter out of the Letters to a Young Poet by Rilke, who was a poet, writing to a younger poet who was looking to him for advice. I picked this up on a whim on my ebook when I just the earlier this week and uh, I immediately knew within a couple pages that this is what I wanted to read for this tag. This is a, I believe Rilke in his late twenties, 27 ish, uh, writing to a, a young man about 19 who has a, a similar teacher in common. Uh, and so this is him giving his advice to that person corresponding in letters. And so this opens up with a small quote, and then it's going to go into the letter. We're just going to dive right into this. I know of no other advice than this. Go within and scale the depths of your being from which your very life springs forth. Paris, 17 February, 1903. My dear sir, your letter reached me just a few days ago. I want to thank you for the deep and loving trust it revealed. I can do no more. I cannot com comment on the style of your verses. Critical intent is too far removed from my nature. There is nothing that managed it, manages to influence a work of art less than critical words. They always result in more or less unfortunate misunderstandings. Things are not as easily understood nor as expressible as people usually would like us to believe. Most happenings are beyond expression. They exist where a word has never intruded. Even more inexpressible are works of art. Mysterious entities they are, whose lives, compared to our fleeting ones, endure. Having said these things at the outset, I dare now tell you only this, that your verses do not as yet have an individual style, yet they possess a quiet and hidden inclination to reveal something personal. I felt that very thing most notably in the last poem, My Soul. There, something of your inner self wants to rise to the expression, and in the beautiful poem to Lepardi, Leopardi, Something akin to greatness and bordering on uniqueness is spreading out toward fulfillment. However, the poems cannot yet stand on their own merit and are not yet independent, not even the last one to Leo Party, not yet. In your kind letter accompanying them, you do not fail to admit to and to analyze some shortcomings, which I could sense while reading your verses, but could not directly put into words. You ask whether your poems are good. You send them to publishers. You compare them with other poems. You are disturbed when certain publishers reject your attempts. Well now, since you have given me permission to advise you, I suggest that you give all that up. You are looking outward and above all else. That you must not do now. No one can advise and help you. No one. There is only one way. Go within. Search for the cause. Find the impetus that bids you right. Put it to the test. Does it stretch out its roots in deepest places of your heart? Can you avow that you would die if you were forbidden to write? Above all, in the most silent hour of your night, ask yourself this, must I write? Dig deep into yourself for a true answer. And if it should ring its assent, if you can confidently meet the serious question with a simple I must, then build your life upon it. It has become your necessity. Your life, and even the most mundane and least significant hour, must become a sign, a testimony to this urge. Then draw near to nature. Pretend you are the very first man and then write what you see and experience, what you love and lose. Do not try, do not write love poems, at least at first. They present the greatest challenge. It requires great, fully ripened power to produce something personal, something unique, when there are so many good and sometimes even brilliant renditions in great numbers. Beware of general themes. Cling to those that your everyday life offers you. Write about your sorrows, your wishes, your passing thoughts, your belief in anything beautiful. 
describe all that with fervent, quiet, and humble sincerity. In order to express yourself, use things in your surroundings, the scenes of your dreams, and the subjects of your memory. If your everyday life appears to be unworthy subject matter, do not complain to life. Complain to yourself. Lament that you are not poet enough to call up its wealth. For the creative artist, there is no poverty. Nothing is insignificant or unimportant. Even if you were in a prison whose walls would shut out from your senses the sounds of the outer world, would you not then still have your childhood, this precious wealth, this treasure house of memories? Direct your attention to that. Attempt to resurrect those sunken sensations of the distant past. You will gain assuredness. Your aloneness will expand. You will become and will become your home, greeting you like the quiet dawn. Outer tumult will pass it by from afar. If, as a result of this turning inward, of this sinking into your own world, poetry should emerge, you will not think to ask someone whether it is good poetry. And you will not try to interest publishers of magazines in these works, for you will hear in them your own voice. You will see in them a piece of your life, a natural possession of yours. A piece of art is good if it is born of necessity. This, its source, is its criterion. There is no other. Therefore, my dear friend, I know of no other advice than this. Go within and scale the depths of your beings from which your very life springs forth. At its source, you will find the answer to the question whether you must fight. Accept it, however it sounds to you, without analyzing. Perhaps it will become apparent to you that you are indeed called to be a writer. Then accept that fate, bear its burden and grandeur, without asking for the reward, which might possibly come from without. For the creative artist must be a world of his own and must find everything within himself and in nature to which he has betrothed himself. It is possible that, even after your descent into your inner self and into your secret place of solitude, you might find that you must give up becoming a poet. As I have said, to feel that one could live without writing is enough indication that, in fact, one should not. Even then, this process of turning inward, upon which I beg you to embark, will not have been in vain. Your life will no doubt from then on find its own paths. They will be good ones and rich and expansive. That I wish for you more than I can say. What else shall I tell you? It seems to me everything has been said with just the right emphasis. I wanted only to advise you to progress quietly and seriously in your involvement, in your evolvement. You could greatly interfere with that process if you look outward and expect to obtain answers from the outside. Answers which only your innermost feeling in your quietest hour can perhaps give you. I was very happy to find in your writing the name of Professor Hora Eck. I harbor the highest regard for this kind of scholars and owe him the lasting gratitude. Would you please pass my sentiments on to him? It is very kind of him to think of me still, and I appreciate it. I am returning the verses with which you entrusted me. I thank you again for your unconditional and sincere trust. I am overwhelmed with it, and therefore have tried to the best of my ability to make myself a little more worthy than I, as a stranger to you, really am. With my sincerest interest and devotion, yours, Rainer Maria Rilke. So that is the first letter in the collection of ten letters. And even though it specifically talks about in, in the framework of poetry, you, you can sense that so much of that advice, if, if we took that, seriously took that, for ourselves and looked inward for what drives us, what brings us joy to seek only to be contented by what we ourselves find to be worthwhile for ourselves, that we could find contentment so much easier, regardless of what you're looking at. Instead of looking towards others for acceptance, for reward, find it within yourself. If your calling is to, to, to till the land and work a garden, then enjoy yourself while you're doing that. Who cares about what anybody else thinks or says? Because the only person whose opinion should matter about it at the end of the day is yourself. I think that's absolutely beautiful advice that he passes down. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm hoping to someday find a copy of this book to add to my shelf because I can already tell 
the next nine letters are going to be equally delightful for me to read. And I want a copy of it. I was not successful today in trying to find a copy. As you're going to find out in my weekend mishmash here, I, I'm not going to be buying anything for myself for a while for books. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it encourages you to maybe pick up the, uh, the this book yourself and read the other nine letters because it, it, it promises to be full of really good advice that applies. Teach me how to grow up. Oh, okay, buddy. Applies to things not only to poets but to life in general for everybody. And uh, it's wonderful. I'm so glad that on an impulse, I decided to check it out because already it is very, very rewarding as a reading experience. I hope you're doing well. I hope you will do this best chapter tag. I'm not going to tag a whole bunch of people. I'll, I'll have a few mentioned down below. But I, I want to tag a, a few of you now. I want to tag Miss Reads a lot. So Sandy over there. I want to tag Shelly Swearingen and Michael K. Vaughn. I want to tag Rachel R.K. Stumbling Bear. Uh, I'm curious what yours is. Chris Nell, SFF Reader. Uh, and tag the duo at An Erudite Adventure. Let's tag Alicia Reads and Rambles because I'm buddy reading with her, as well as Beth Ann and Rachel is reading, because I'm buddy reading with both of them currently right now too. And then Victoria from Hufflepuff Discovery, because I recently buddy read with you. And we will end it by also tagging Jennifer Brooks. I'll have all of them down below. Let's add one more, because his video just went up uh, today on the top 150 science fiction books. So Michael from Fit to be Read, I will tag you as well. So let's, uh, let's spread this around. Let's read some chapters, some great books to each other um, and, and see where this takes us because I, I think it's going to be wonderful to hear from the books and fall in love with new books along the way. 